Welcome to the Time Capsule, where we analyze history to find lessons worth learning. Today we're going to discuss Socrates, the father of modern philosophy. This affects you because he's the founder of the Socratic method. And it's a basis for a lot of philosophical debates. And one of the things that's often mentioned is about how he was so virtuous for dying for his beliefs. But I think there's a point that many people miss about his life. Now let's open up the time capsule to look into the past. Now, what did Socrates actually provide us? You know, Socrates provided us with the Socratic method. It's where you question a series of broad range questions about something. You explore the assumptions of why someone believes something. Then you examine the responses that you receive for your questions. Through this discussion, you will find some wisdom or some more information. Socrates was famous for saying that he knew nothing. Now that we discussed the important thing that Socrates is most well known for, let's discuss the man's life. He was born in 469 to 470 BC to Sophroniscus and Phenertra. <laughs> if I pronounce that badly, I'm sorry. A stone worker and a midwife in the Athenian dam of Alapici. He lived in <laughs> close to his father's relatives and inherited his as was customs, part, customary, part of his father's estate, securing a financial secure life. He learned the basic skills of reading, writing, and received extra lessons in gymnastics, poetry, and music. He was married twice. He fulfilled his military service during the Peloponnesian War and distinguished himself in three campaigns, according to Plato. Plato in his Apology describes Socrates' respect for the law in the arrest of Ion the Salamanian. Socrates and four others were summoned to the Tholos and told by representatives of the 30 tyrants to arrest Leon for execution. Again, Socrates was the only abstainer to risk the tyrant's wrath and retribution rather than to participate in what he considered a crime. Socrates attracted a great interest from the Athenian public, and especially the Athenian youth, for his public discussion of philosophy and how he thought. He was described as ugly, had a flat nose, bulging eyes, and a large belly. He supposedly moderated his eating, drinking, and physical intimacy, but he didn't completely abstain. Socrates didn't take advantage of his disciples and have physical intimacy with him with them, which was common at the time. He did not take sides between the Democrats or the oligarchs in Athens. He married Xanthip in his fifties, then he had three sons. In four oh four BC, the Athenians had been crushed by Spartans at the decisive battle of Agsopotamini. <laughs> then the Spartans laid siege to Athens. They replaced the democratic government with a new group of oligarchs named the Thirty Tyrants. Their methods were tyrannical, so they were briefly overthrown. A Spartan request for aid arrived, and a compromise was sought. When the Spartans left, however, the Democrats seized the opportunity to kill the oligarchs and reclaim the government. Socrates died in Athens in 399 BC after a trial of impiety and the corruption of the young. According to custom, he proposed his own penalty, that he be given free food and housing in, by the state for services rendered. He proposed an alternative to be fined one silver mina of silver, according to him, that's all he had. He spent his last day in prison amongst his friends and followers who offered him an escape. He died the next day, drinking poison in accordance with the sentence. Socrates died in Athens in 399 BC. He died at the ripe old age of 70.
I think th- now the thing that I think that is most telling about Socrates in particular that most people do not discuss is the fact that he was willing to face the consequences of his actions even if it meant death. That's true, but it's more of the fact that he was 70. Now, imagine that the average lifespan for the era that you were living in was 35 to 40, and you lived double that. Right now, that would be like someone living to be 150. Now, let me say that again. That would be like someone living to be like 150, or well over 100 years old. At that point in time, you probably see most of your friends and family go on and pass you by. You've lived to a ripe old age. So I, his sacrifice was more understandable because of the point in time that he was at his life, especially considering the age in which he lived in. If he was 20 years old and made that same sacrifice, I think that would be far more meaningful rather than if you were, say, 90 or 100 and then you're given that option. What's a few more days where you're not certain that you're going to live versus an entire lifetime that you have ahead of you? Not to say that he wasn't courageous or anything like that because he did serve in the Peloponnesian War, but I think this is a point that's often discussed and isn't really brought up in the correct light because you have to consider it from the perspective of the individual at the time. He did offer several other benefits and things worth learning as well. Socrates believed in the value of introspection and self-examination. He famously, he famously said, an unexamined life is not worth living. This emphasized the importance of reflecting on one's beliefs, values, and actions and leading to a more meaningful and purposeful life. It's only by asking yourself questions and questioning why something is the way that it is that you're able to determine if it's the right, right for you. Perhaps it was right at the time, but maybe you've inherited some beliefs that aren't correct for you. We often have beliefs handed down from generation to generation that may not be meaningful in this modern times, because they may be reflective of a different time period entirely. As discussed previously, like the uh, the ideas of chivalry and their thought process and how men are held up to a standard of being chivalrous, I think the, the overall thought process isn't necessarily a bad thing, but from a historical perspective, it doesn't make any sense. We are as we are, and we are as we always were. No better and worse. If anything, I think actually most modern people are actually better because they, their standard of living is so high that we are living such a great life, even though it may not seem it just because of your relative base for comparison. Another thing that Socrates is famous for is for his intellectual honesty. He admitted that he knew nothing. And he a friend of his told him that the Oracle of Delphi said that he was the mo- the wisest man in all of Athens because of that. Because of his intellectual honesty and the fact that he was ignorant and he admitted it. And he was willing to question and ask questions. And I think that's actually what was so appealing to that made him so appealing to people that followed him, like Plato, for instance, because of his intellectual honesty and the fact that he questioned things. And one of the things that I didn't know about particularly was the fact that he went on to do it, fulfill his civic duty. He served in the war. He did so honorably. He did three terms. That's quite a bit. Far more than I have, for instance. And the, the other thing, too, that's important is his influence on Western philosophy. Because the, he, he didn't really record any of his teachings. His teachings were recorded by his students, Plato and Xenophon. Xenophon. And, this, and that emphasized ethics, justice, and the pursuit of wisdom. And that continues to shape our modern philosophical thought process. Because it was the basis for the foundation thereof. Now, I hope that you enjoyed your time in the past. We have to close the time capsule and leave the history behind us. Thank you for coming with me on the journey into the past. I hope to see you soon when we open the next time capsule.